Hello students, welcome back. So we are here to begin the part two of the chapter, food, where does it come from? Food from animals. Animals are a source to many food items. Have you seen the bees who collect nectar from flowers, convert them into honey and store it in their hives? We collect the stored food by the bees and we call it honey. We get eggs from hens, ducks, emu and other birds. We get milk from cows, goats, camels and other animals. Milk can later be converted into cheese, butter, yogurt, cream and buttermilk. These are called the dairy products. We get meat from fish, goat, pigs and poultry. The food we eat every day makes up our diet and our diet usually must contain variety of food items. Before we advance forward, let's discuss a science fact. So you must have eaten the mushrooms, the yummy yummy mushrooms. Now the question over here is whether mushrooms are plants or animals. Put on your thinking caps and keep thinking. To our amazement, mushrooms are neither plants nor animals. They belong to the fungi kingdom which is very different from the animal and the plant kingdoms. As food, mushrooms resemble vegetables but in nutritional contents, particularly proteins, they resemble animal meat. Some are edible and some are deadly. Button mushrooms are the most common mushrooms that people eat throughout the world. Now let's have some examples for the edible as well as inedible mushrooms. So the edible ones are the button, the morel, the porcini and the king oyster. Whereas the inedible are helvella, webcap, deathcap and conocybe pilaris. Food habits of animals. Let's discuss about the animal and the food the animal eats. The first one is a cat. Cat likes to eat birds, milk and small animals. A buffalo or a cow likes to eat grass, grains, oil cake and hay. A rat likes to eat grains, cheese, vegetables and fruits. A lion likes to eat deer, rabbit and other animals. A lizard likes to eat mosquitoes, flies and small insects. A crow likes to eat dead animals, grains and fruit. Monkey likes to eat fruit, vegetables and grains. A spider likes to eat mosquitoes, flies and small insects. Whereas the butterfly likes to eat nectar from flowers. Based on the different foods the animals eat, they can be kept under various categories as herbivores, carnivores, omnivores, scavengers and parasites. Let's discuss them one by one. Herbivores are the animals which eat only plants or plant products. Example, cow, rabbit, ibex, giraffe and snail. Herbivores like cows and buffaloes have adapted to chew and grind grass with their flat and blunt molars. Squirrels and rabbits have sharp teeth to eat seeds and nuts. Carnivores on the other hand are animals which eat only animals. Example, leopard, crocodile, eagle, shark and spider. Carnivores like snakes swallow their prey. Lions and leopards have long sharp canines to tear flesh. Eagles have long pointed beaks to tear flesh. Frogs and lizards have a long sticky tongue to catch their prey. Now coming to the third one, some animals which eat both plants and animals are called omnivores. So we have squirrel, bear, wild boar and the rooster as an example. Omnivores like crows have strong pointed beak to tear flesh. Where would you place the human beings? Humans are omnivores with different types of teeth that allows us to eat both plants and animals. 
moving to the scavengers animals that eat dead plants and animals are called scavengers scavengers help the environment by consuming dead carcasses and thereby keep the surroundings clean example crow hyena jackal carrion beetle and vulture a very important question at this point despite eating the rotten and the deteriorated flesh of the dead animals why don't scavengers get sick the answer is in their genes which make them have super strong stomachs and immune system moving to the parasites animals that live on or inside other animals and get their food from them are called parasites now parasites are not a disease but they can spread diseases and different parasites have different effects examples lice flea leech bed bug and the tapeworm The relationship between organisms for transferring nutrients is called a food chain. It consists of a series of animals through which energy or nutrients pass in a habitat. All food chains start with plants. This makes all animals depend directly or indirectly on plants for food. Plants use the energy in the sunlight to make their food and are called producers. a herbivore gets nutrients by eating plants and thus called a consumer a carnivore or omnivore eat herbivores to get their nutrients so nutrients are passed to different living beings let's have an example a water plant being eaten by a pond snail pond snail being eaten by a fish and the fish being eaten by a kingfisher let's extend it so we say that sun is the source of energy and the plants take the energy from the sun to grow plants are further eaten by a locust or a cricket which in turn can be eaten by a rat rat in turn can be eaten by a snake and the chain does not stop here snakes can be eaten by eagle when the eagle dies the nutrients are returned to the soil Let's have a slightly complexer food chain this time. So we have mango being eaten by the fruit fly, fruit fly in turn being eaten by the dragon fly or the bird, and either of them being eaten by the hawk. We have the butterfly who takes nectar from tulip and lavender, and then can be eaten in turn by the frog or the dragon fly, and the dragon fly being eaten by a hawk. or if the frog eats the butterfly the frog in turn can be eaten by a python and the python can be eventually eaten by the hawk we have corn being eaten by the grasshopper grasshopper being eaten by the rat or the frog and either of them can be eaten by the python and this can be eaten by the hawk or else the rat can be directly eaten by the hawk as well so if we see all in all hawk is the animal which is on the top of this particular food chain let's summarize the chapter the food is essential for providing energy for growth and repair and to maintain a healthy body we get food from different parts of plants and animals pulses fruits and vegetables nuts spices and herbs are obtained from plants whereas eggs milk meat and honey are obtained from animals herbivores eat plants carnivores eat other animals and omnivores eat both plants and animals a food chain shows a relationship between organisms for transferring nutrients all food chains start from plants there are some keywords used throughout the chapter let's have a quick discussion on them so the first one is carcass the body of a dead animal habitat which is a place where an organism or a population naturally occurs ingredient one of the substance present in a mixture nectar the sweet liquid secreted by the flowers nutrient a source of nourishment poultry domestic fowl or the bird which is raised for the food prey a living thing eaten by another living thing and finally we have tissue which is 
group of cells that function together to do a specific job. As an extended learning to this chapter, you may make a model of the food chain, present a seminar on importance of scavenging animals like crows, vultures, hyenas and jackals, make a report of the animals which have gone extinct due to human interventions, compile a table of herbivores, carnivores and omnivores apart from the animals discussed during the chapter progression, find different food items eaten across the globe and finally, does everyone around you get enough food? If not, why? So we come to an end of this chapter. Hope you have liked studying it. And in case you have any queries or questions, please send a mail to learning.space.mk at gmail.com and meet you in the next chapter, which is components of food. Until then, happy learning.